is good and acceptable and the perfect uh, perfect uh, will of God. And uh, I'll come back and I want to share a little bit more on that as I give a report in a little while. Amen? Okay. But right now, the first thing that we have in line is that we want to uh, call the meeting to order. Okay. And so for two, 2014, we want to call it to order and ask uh, that our minutes will be read for uh, 2013 so that, so that we can take a look at where we've come since then. Thank you. At this time, I... Praise the Lord. The activities for 2013 and the minutes I'm going to read will happen there at that time. And there are more things that happened that I didn't put in. This is just for the meeting that we had on the 12th. Okay, last minute, we have uh, last year minutes were approved. Number two, woods of AG roof to be fixed. So this was an ongoing project. Uh, locating a youth leader, and I understand that that has been completed, so we praise the Lord for that. Now, this seems to be an occurring problem now and then, but I believe this is under control. Some pump was down, power lost, all was repaired, so praise the Lord, amen for that. We're always having a lot of fun with those pumps. Uh. Praise the Lord. So that takes care of all our water problem, our uh, the new roof also was a question. Didn't know if, if that was going to be done or it's going to be done in house or. Okay. Praise the Lord. So that will be taken care of just as soon as the weather gives us an opportunity to do it. All right. Praise the Lord. Timothy House. This is great news that start, started last year, too. We'll be receiving support from Calvary Church of New Jersey. They are now helping the Timothy House with uh, some of the payments that they are having. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, that since that time, since since last year, they've been paying the uh, mortgage on that Timothy house, which is uh, they've been giving a thousand a month, so that we could keep that open. And we were uh, we were handling that, and it was really hard on us. It was very hard on us. Since then, we we just uh, went down, and they're also paid for all the back taxes on the other house, and we're going to be reopening that one. It's a good thing. And a girl who just came in, she's from Jersey, bought a guy said that they also prayed for a double offering and they may be getting us a van. Good thing. Uh, my name is Vincent Moore, for the record, M-O-O-R-E. Uh, my, my summary report is based on the past 18 months. It's uh, the investment in the men. It's just how the uh, in the past 18 months. We've had uh, three graduates, Jose Benscomi, which uh, we stayed in contact with, is employed and has a home fellowship and is active in it. Uh, another graduate we've had in the past 18 months is Mark Stegman. We've been stayed in contact with. He's also employed and has a home fellowship and is also uh, active in that. And uh, Mario Nunez was the other uh, graduate. We ha I have been in contact with him. He is employed. He has a home fellowship. And uh, 
in the past 18 months, we've had four men that uh, failed to complete their commitments, the six-month commitments. One of the four we have stayed in contact with, and he is employed and has a home fellowship and is active in it. So, uh, <clears throat> Currently, we have six men in the house, John McDougal, John Miller, and Noel Ramirez have all fulfilled their six-month commitment and have chosen to make an extra commitment to stay on for leadership and also uh, continue on in the second phase of the program, which Calvary is going to be helping us with, which we'll be able to do that with. So that's a huge blessing. Uh, we also have uh, other another three men that are currently in the first phase of the program, Richard Valles, Michael Scales, and Jeremiah. I don't know his last name because he got here about a half hour ago. <laughs> And uh, that's the uh, summary report on the men at the Timothy House, our investment in the men. Praise the Lord. Amen. You talk about a busy house. Praise the Lord. I believe what that makes a total of what, eight, eight men that are in the Timothy House now? Wow. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 And I love the report of those that have gone on to do things for the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Okay, next thing on the minutes. We were trying to see if we get a tax be removed from the houses, and I don't know if we've gotten any far with that. Praise the Lord. Also, we had a baptistry installed, and it's ready for use, as far as I know. And it has hot and cold running water. So you know what that means when we get baptized. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that has been completed. And then we received a treasury report for last year, uh, the 12th. And the report was approved. The, what happened then in that period, they were going over the tied envelopes and how to use them and how to put in what's needed. And also it was mentioned that we do have a what they call a online giving. Now, this is a different one than the new one that we have now, which I believe the Treasury will explain that one a little bit more for us. Other than that, that is a complete minute of, of 2012. Praise the Lord. You'll get 2013 on 2015. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, next up on our agenda, I believe it's the treasurer's report. Praise the Lord. Okay, pastor makes a motion that we accept the minutes. Anybody? Sec Thank you. Praise the Lord. Good evening. The 2013 um, fiscal report, financial report, is above you. You can see it. And there is a comparison for the 2012 report. So you are able to see the difference between 2013 and 2012. And we will go through each line item. So you can see for income, we'll look at that first. Our Sunday 8 a.m. service for 2013, $14,890. A $10,000 uh, deficit compared to our 2012 Sunday 8 a.m. service, which was $24,045.50. Our Sunday 10.30 a.m. service, $104,872.50. An increase of about $10,000 compared to 2012, which was $95,236.37. The midweek Wednesday service, $19,232 around a $5,000 difference compared to 2012 numbers of $25,707.06. For special services, which would be like a New Year's Eve service, a Christmas Eve service, providing they didn't fall on a regular service night, 
Um, for 2013, ninety-six dollars. For 2012, seven hundred and eighty-one dollars. Online giving, and this includes the addition of textable this year, eight thousand three hundred and eleven dollars and eighteen cents. Praise God. Compared to one thousand seven hundred twenty dollars and thirty-seven cents for the year of 2012. Amen. Ministry and outreach offerings, this would include the Care and Share Fund, the Women's Ministry, the Children's Ministry, any of those special offerings. Um, $12,756 for the 2013 fiscal year compared to $20,508.41 for the 2012 year. Total income from services, $160,157.68. In 2013, $167,998.71 for 2012, a difference of uh, a, a deficit of $7,841.03 for this year, for 2013. Other income, you can see that we had fundraising. We had nothing in 2013 compared to $1,721.22 in uh, 2012, and I want to talk about why that happened because I know that that potentially will uh, have some questions. In 2012, we would fundraise, and then we would say we are giving it to the children's ministry or we're giving it to the oil fund. This year, if you remember, when you were going into a fundraiser, you knew exactly what it was for. So instead of allocating it as a fundraiser, it was actually allocated right into that ministry line. Does that make sense? So it's not necessarily that our fundraising was down, although there were, we did have uh, less yard sales and flea markets and that kind of thing. But for the most part, the fundraising that did happen, it was allocated directly into the line item that it was designated for, okay? The golf tournament fundraiser, we did not have one in 2013, so we did not see any income from that. In 2012, $12,006.92. Outside donations, $11,703 in 2013, compared with $50,085.39 in 2012. Again, while there is, um, well you see a large deficit, it isn't quite as large as it seems. Because in 2012, when churches were giving to us, that money wasn't necessarily designated to a program. So it was coming in as an outside donation. But now we have specifically for the Timothy House mortgage, specifically for. So you will see in the Timothy House line item an increase, and you see the decrease here. Does that make sense? Okay. For the Halabruya, uh, $161. For the Timothy House and Hannah House offerings and rents, $25,530 compared to $11,189. Amen. For evangelism, $13,240.38, up from $8,837.25. The farmer's market in 2013, we opted not to do it, so we did not have any income from the farmer's market. And you see in 2012, when we did do the farmer's market, $9,975. And you, will s right, and you will see some of that in the expense report as well. Total income for 2013, $210,762.06. Total income for 2012, $261,813.49. A difference of a deficit of $51,021.43 for 2013. So doing more with less. Amen. For expenses for 2013, for ministry and outreach expenses, again, these are your specific ministry lines, women's ministry, children's ministry, youth ministry, care and share. You can see the expenses for this year, $25,258.85 in comparison with last year of $46,131.67. Operation expenses, audio and visual equipment, $1,475.25. Uh, 
much lower than our 2012 expense of $7,850.90. Video streaming and tech support, $1,806.99 compared to 2012 of $686.10. Building and grounds maintenance for 2013, $2,406.45, compared to $2,594.61 dollars in 2012. We did not have any building renovations in 2013 that were charged off as expenditures. In 2012, $1,393.34. Electricity, $9,190.66. 2012, $7,811.89. Health insurance, in 2013, $6,204.71, compared to $6,833.38 in 2012. Office equipment and supplies, $2,918.52, compared to $11,871.72 in 2012. There is a re there's a reason for that, and we'll talk about it. You'll see it when it comes out in payroll. Okay, make more sense there. Continuing with our expenses, operational expenses, $5,560.73 for telephone and internet in 2013, compared to $6,078.79 in 2012. For oil, gas, heating, $5,027.79 in 2013, compared to $7,658.66 in 2012. Operating insurance expense, $5,108 in 2013, compared to $4,871 in 2012. Mor mortgage expense, $25,190.22 in 2013, compared to $19,023.75 in 2012. Our mortgage did not increase in 2013 we were able to catch up on some back payments, which is the difference in the totals. Amen. For pastoral reimbursement, $2,440.45 in 2013, compared to $3,916.21 in 2012. For pastor's retreat and lodging, he was not able to go in 2013. In 2012, $466.36. Payroll and employment taxes for 2013, $124,369.74, $124, compared to $113.39.64 in 2012. The difference between that, if you think back to where the office expense happened to be earlier and you saw around a $10,000 difference, in that budget line item, uh, the bookkeeper at that point was paid a stipend or a reimbursement, so it was charged off to the office in 2012. In 2013, the bookkeeper went on salary, on payroll, and therefore was a payroll expense, which if you think about the difference in the numbers, just why that came up. Payroll employer taxes, $8,625.68, compared to $4,119.86 in 2012. Pastor's 401k retirement, $493.24 in 2013, compared to nothing in 2012. Uh, we decided this year that we would do what we could um, for our pastor for his retirement, and uh, we stepped out in faith to be able to try to do something. Amen. Promotional expense, such as the newspaper, $170.38 in 2013, compared with $537.70 in 2012. Real estate taxes, specifically for 247 Reg Avenue, $2,913.99, compared with $1,460.57. And again, larger this year because we were able to catch up on some of those payments. For settlement payment plans, potentially back taxes or old taxes that we were settling, $3,243.24 in 2013 compared to $5,645 in 2012. Van vehicle maintenance, $1,507.85 in 2013 compared with $1,693.10 in 2012. 
water, sewer, and trash expense, $2,938.16 in 2013, compared with $3,399.36 in 2012. Total ministry expenses for the year of 2013, $236,850.90, compared with $257,83.61 in 2012. This is a difference of a deficit of $26,058.84 for the year of 2013, specifically in payroll and real estate taxes is where we're seeing our deficit at this point. Important to note that the secretary and the bookkeeper, um, the secretary has not been for at paid for at least five weeks of work in 2013. Uh, our pastor and our bookkeeper have not received three weeks of salary in the year of 2013. That money had to be diverted in order to cover taxes, bills, and operating expenses. Does anyone have any questions about the financial report? I will be happy to answer them. None? Okay. I request a approval for the 2013 financial report. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I pray that 2014 will be a better year, that we'll be able to take care of our pastors and uh, those that are working. And, we'll, and we only have three people working in the office. Could you imagine all the work they have put out for the year? Praise the Lord. Okay. Next on the agenda is installation of new officers. The current board, as it exists right now, is Pastor June, board president, Dietra Vashur, treasurer, Pastor Ray, secretary, Ivan Nigran, board member, Harold, known as Ted Fleming, I should say alias, board member, and Pastor Bev, who is the advisor role at that time. All right? Now, these are the members that are still continuing being on the board. Dietra, treasurer, she completed one year already of a two-year term. Okay, she's got another year to go. Praise the Lord. We pray that she doesn't get white hair. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> and she's doing a great job now. We got a big job ahead of us. Praise the Lord. And Ivan Negron is board member. And he's starting the last year of his second year term. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And he didn't lose that hair because of all the <laughs> headaches and problems we had. <laughs> Amen. And <laughs> Praise the Lord. Harold Ted Fleming completed his first year. He had a one-year term. 
and now he's going to do his last one-year term as a board member. Okay? That's what we have right now. Now, returning or retiring from the board, Pastor Ray, the secretary, has completed a two-year term. So I am... I don't think I'm out of it as the Lord leads, but again, it is, uh, I tell you, it is fun, but it's also an experience knowing the trials that our church is going through and how the Lord has really pulled us out of a lot of, a lot of things, a lot of ways, especially when you got people after you for money, miracles happen for our church. When you give, it helps. And when we look like desperation, he always comes true for us. But again, we have to do our part. So for a replacement of joining the board, the board has debated. No. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, I now give the rest of this part of the meeting to Pastor Jim. <laughs> I love Pastor Ray, and I don't mind his eagerness. It, it's a good person, but just, just I want to explain a couple of the rules and regulations, you know, according to what we have come up with here at City Limits so that you understand uh, what goes on. First of all, you know, I just want to say that, that uh, uh, we, uh, we that are here, uh, you, know, you know, this is a quorum, and we should uh, just really take it serious, you know, I want you to remember, those of you who were here today, remember that this morning this place was packed and about 18 people got saved and, and the kids took name and one got saved downstairs. One of the girls, I thought she was a Latina, but she's a very tall girl, a handsome looking woman, uh, if you call a woman handsome, but, uh, but just a good looking tall girl. Uh, you know, anybody know who I mean? She's the one that said that she was sick, right? Was she, are you Jimmy Groner's wife? She came up, and, and I need to share this with you. Uh, she came to me afterwards, and she said uh, she was like almost teary-eyed. I mean, very, very emoting, you know, very emotional. And I'm, I like, I'm, I'm like about there, about halfway over by Joe. And, 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 and she grabbed me. She said, Pastor, can I, can I talk to you? And, and so I said, que pasa? You know, I'm still thinking in my mind, uh, Latina. You know, I'm going to talk to in Spanish. And I noticed a little accent, and I don't realize it. She tells me, she said, thank you so much. And I said, no, thank you. She said, I'm so glad. I said, you know, I'm honest about that. I'm going to get you guys all Bibles. You know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make that happen. You know, I'm, I'm not going to take it out of our tithing money. We, we don't do that. I mean, if you knew all that we do, we raise, raise and raise so we could get pumps. We raise so we could get pumps that cost six, seven hundred dollars. We go down and do the work. And since the time of, uh, of uh, Deacon Ray and I spending 30 hours popcorn in the ceiling doing the downstairs and everything. But this woman grabbed me and she said to me, she said, uh, I've been coming here for months now and uh, I was a Muslim. She says, my, my husband believed in beating. She says, I was cracked with a four by four on my face. Uh, she's got a, a little scar you could see there but it it was apparently he was trying to almost killed her she said if if i told you my story you would cry yeah she said i could make i could make you cry and she said and and i didn't realize it and i thought and i i, I said oh my god well praise god you know uh, and i stopped and i said he, uh, I, th I just said yeah you have any questions then you know i mean i mean you muslim you i'm t I'd going from allah to and she says no, it's been so clear to me who Jesus is in this place and, and the power of Jesus. But I never knew till today when you said, if anybody knows him, but you have never really accepted him into your heart as Roman. She said, I finally did that. And I felt that she said, like, I'm feeling right now, man, like I want to grab you and hug you, you know. And, and, and I'm like, well, let's not do that. But but praise God, you know, but just. Uh, she's like a Muslim, you know, she, I'm sorry, she was a Muslim, 
and she's been coming here and and uh, you know and, and so I see her standing up and I'm just thinking it's a Latina girl praising God. Well, she's just thankful that she's got a husband that doesn't beat her and doesn't believe that she's trash, you know. And so she's happy with Jim, you know, with her husband. And now today she finally realized that uh, you have to ask Jesus into your heart, you know, and you've got to. And it's not about works, about, you know, praying five times a day or being obedient to your husband, having his dinner ready or getting beat up. And, you know, and so I just wanted you to know that that's uh, that's an amazing thing. And to let you know that that we have done so much with so little. Uh, when she shared on that report, I mean, if you knew, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, that, that looks like a lot of numbers. That, that, uh, that's all rent you know, and stuff that we pay our taxes, some salary, things like that, the gas, electric, phone, the uh, 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 cable, everything that we have to do around here, you know. But if you could imagine oil, you know, when you try to put something in Bertha, you know, uh, it's, it's uh, <laughs> you know, it's a 3,000-gallon tank. Somebody do the math. To fill Bertha is 10 grand. I don't think she's ever been full. I think she'd probably have a panic attack and come right out the ground if she got a full tank, you know. But but anyway, so we put, you know, a thousand bucks at a time or whatever, whatever we can. But but just to let you know, we're always trying to raise money and do that. And sometimes that gets old because, uh, you know, there's a portion of Scripture that says, uh, how can we be living in nice homes and the house of God is in ruins you know, how can we be, how can we be living? And sometimes people say, you know, my finances are ruined. You know, my, uh, my life is ruined. I don't have things in order. Things are not right. Sometimes that's because you just need to get God's stuff right. And then everything else goes right, you know. And, and I can tell you from proof. And, 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 and I'm sure that all of you can. You know, all of us have our story where we failed and then we got back up. And, and that, that is the beauty of being a Christian is that we fall down and we can get up. And while there's grace, I'm going to keep getting up. Amen. I wanted to share with you. So I said all that just to say this, that, that in order to be a board member at City Limits Assembly of God, that a membership is not cheap, but we don't give it away just because you got here and because you've been coming. We make you go through the classes, make you ask and answer all the questions, make you do that, and then also have a courtship period after that to make sure that that after you've done that, that you still come because it's, a, it's something that you want to do, not force. Well, in the same way, a person's got to be here over two, three years, over three years in order to be a board member. And they've got to be somebody who is offering their tithe. It's got to be somebody uh, uh, who is in good standing with the church. Got to be somebody who is in ministry, involved in ministry. Has to be somebody who makes it to even uh, to at least two services per week so that they are genuinely involved in what's going on in the rhythm of the church. If you can imagine, if somebody misses four services around here, you're, you're done. We're like trying to catch you up at what happened, you know. And uh, so I want you to know that that uh, the person that we've picked as Pastor Ray is going to retire and he's a pastor now. So he's at the point to where, you know, uh, he really should not be on on the board. And as an advisor, it'd be wonderful to have him. He's a great elder, great man, good man, you know, uh, uh, have absolutely no complaints at all, you know, uh, d d except that as as per our bylaws, you know, he is a pastor now. He's gotten ordained this year, so he's he's fairly cooked himself. <laughs> you know, we, we have to let him preach. We have to let him preach, so that we need a secretary. So that we need a secretary. Okay, we need somebody who can um, somebody uh, who's got integrity, somebody who can take down notes, somebody who can keep notes, somebody who can articulate them, somebody who's got some administrative skills. And what we want to do is get better and better around here as we go along, all right? I mean, I remember when the board was me, Debbie, Timmy, and Jessica, you know, and that was it. There was the men's ministry, women's ministry, and kids' ministry all in one, you know, and the music team. And, and it's grown since then. And so uh, I wanted you to know that, you know, the person that will be taking this job, this is going to have to be – this is the whole thing. It's in such small font that this is the – kind of the page form, you know, somebody uh, who can take down, uh, uh, who can take down all the notes, uh, 
they can have a clear understanding of all the uh, bylaws and all the uh, things that, that go into having a meeting, a formal meeting and things like that. Uh, must be informed of all activities at all times, must give full warning, has to have essential continuity in terms of information of what has been happening in following meetings. Let me give you an example. You know, um, all of us have been sitting together for months. Um, you know, there's been times that I've not been paid. Um, is it okay if I share this? You sure? So last week, uh, Cindy gave me my check, and I found out that the Hannah House had not been paid for two months. So I said, keep my check, just pay, make the payment, pay, pay the mortgage, pay it, just pay the mortgage, do it, you know, and uh, had to go home and tell Debbie we're, we're not going to be getting paid this week. Okay, and here's the thing is I'm not crying no blues, man. Somebody's got to stay in Samaria and be here and do the work that's got to be done here. And sometimes we have to sacrifice. So those numbers sometimes are a reflection of when they say, wow, did they reimburse you $2,500? Yeah, and, and I gave away six weeks of checks. Uh, last, uh, uh, last year I said keep seven weeks or keep eight and give me – a third of that, you know, keep, you know, don't pay me for seven weeks or eight weeks and just I'll take two or three, you know, and, and, and so I can catch my mortgage up or something. But I want you to know that uh, that uh, miracles happened too. We had a lady who came and bought a roofer. We had a lady who just came and said, hey, she said, uh, congratulations on the van. And I'm thinking, we don't know that we got the van. And she said, oh, yeah. Oh, you don't. Oh. Right, okay, well, praise God, Pastor Jim. Got to go back to Patterson. And she dropped the guy off, right? Uh, you know, I want you to know that we owe $6,800 in taxes for the Hannah House. It needs to be fixed up, right? We preached and we went down there. Anybody know what the offering was? They gave us $12,000. Not to me, not not to, not for me, not for Harley, for city limits. Get that house open again. Start a second phase. So our dream is to is to is to start that. Open it up. Get some guys over there. Guys that, that are transitioning to phase two. Get them jobs and let them pay the bill for that house. So that doesn't come out of your pocket either. So that we can do other things. Let me tell you who. So it's got to be somebody who can take notes, somebody who can be okay with us, somebody who is a dear friend, a good brother, good, good standing in the Lord, a good standing with other members, and the person that, that we have chosen after all the criterion of, you know, is this a good man, are they this and that, man or woman, I'm sorry, can be either, or is Dwayne Tolson. There's a couple of others of you that soon as we go forward, it'll be your time. And there are other ministries that when you're preaching and teaching, that takes you out of the box on that one. We don't want you doing so much that you're burning out. Amen? Okay, we don't want you doing that, and we do need to. So I'll share a little bit more about that. But uh, of all the people that we've uh, taken a look at and looked at, that we found him to be the very best candidate for this position, for this type of a position and so I put him out there to you and put his name and I'd like to see what your pleasure is if you want to first and second that and take that through okay, okay well, you can only do one but that's, that's okay it wants to do two so and listen to I I think there, there would be a very a very special moment now where we would tell Dwayne to come forward and tell him, so let's have his wife. I think she's got something to share, right? You want to tell me that he's sick, right? He's, he's very sick. It is. I, I know that. Okay, please tell him that it's a unanimous thing. Is it unanimous, guys? He's, uh, Dwayne is uh, just, he's... It's just good man, you know.
And uh, I want you to please tell Dwayne, and we'll pray for him in a few minutes. But also, Pastor Bev, she, she's like, she's brokenhearted that she didn't make it to the revelation. She's been like, she's been like happier than me about it. Like, praise God, we're going to do it. Let's do, let's get a billboard. And, you know, in the middle of the night, you know, we can, you know, you know, <laughs> just. And, and so she's got, I just watched it on TV. It was great, but I can't see the board. You can't see the board, so i got to get a bigger marker. So I understand that. But just, you know, to let you know. Thank you so much, okay? Accept it and receive, okay? Uh, that, uh, you know, I'll call Dwayne and tell him, and also I'll let his wife tell him as well. And uh, next time he comes to church, I will have a little bit of a, 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 a little bit of a ceremony where we receive him in and we charge him with the responsibilities that he's going to be charged with, okay? Now, now, why do we do it staggered? One has one year, one has two, one has on their second term of one year. Okay, it's staggered so that somebody can remember what happened. You know, I mean, if you took all new people and they said, okay, and you guys said, hey, listen, we didn't pay you. You're going to give up some. We're going to take care of you and give you a reimbursement down the line. Then everybody's doing to say, we're going to give you what? We ain't giving you nothing. And, and, and like, so it's important to have a, a board member on board who remembers and says, no, this is what's in the notes, man. We said that we'd reimburse, you know, some of that. And thank you for going out and, 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 and going to Baltimore in the middle of the night to get a $5,000 check and get a $3,000 check and get a $1,000 check and, and get that. And right now, uh, Morningstar Fellowship is giving us 1000 a month towards our homes right now um, as to Calvary's giving a thousand right now at Quaker town assembly of God is giving 200 a month. And that is about it church. Other than that, we go out and raise it and it is, is hard, man. Like I'm telling you, I'd love to just preach and stay in my office and have people come in and tell me their problems and pray with them. And uh, so it's going to be a better year, I think, right? It's, it's going to be a better year. So um, at this time, I don't know if we transfer back over. Do we transfer over? I'm sorry, someone helped me. I got all emotional and I'm all messed up. Amen. Thank you. With my wireless around it, I would love to have that. Attitude, right? Have you noticed that they've got like it's like a, you know, from uh, running around and rampage to like, you know, praying at the altar. To just, I had a little kid. I said today, I put my hand on his. I want to pray with you. It's okay. Put your hand on my head now. <laughs> do 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 it now. Okay. <laughs> that's it's just amen and i'm like i'm like that 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 works for me it works for me let's share something with you some of the things that we ought to be doing let me cast a little bit of vision for you uh i have my paper right here starting our prison ministry up our men's our men's ministry prison ministry i have another sheet right there it should be Unless it's right here. I'm sorry. It, it, it is right here. Okay, starting our men's ministry up too. And I got Arturo. Okay, he's going to be taking that that slot. Amen. Okay. Okay. That, that'll, mean, that'll mean somebody who can sign up other people, who can qualify other people, who can bring the names to me. We can talk about them. Talk about uh, what they're going to preach, how they're going to preach, what they're going to do. Nobody in prison needs to be nailed. They need to be loved and encouraged. Plus, people will send letters all the time from prison that they want to come to Timothy House when they get out, you know, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, everybody wants to do all the right things in prison. But the minute they hit the street, it changes. So so those letters are read by Vinny sometimes, by me. And now it'll be, be, be uh, by Arturo as well, okay? The uh, next thing is, is that, is that Ivan is going to be doing our youth ministry again. Ivan asked me, Ivan knows that I was out looking 
uh, I went to Valley Forge College, and uh, I shared. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, they probably wanted to get saved, <laughs> you know. But there was like so many kids; they were hot on fire. They see everything we do; they love what we're doing. But here's the thing: Can you pay me forty-five thousand dollars a year so I can pay my school loans? No, I'm not coming to your church. I like it, but you know what I mean? Are you following me? This is where we are in life now. We're like school is so expensive for a kid that they're like, well, you know, I need to get paid enough to so uh, so I can do that. And uh, and while I was doing this, he had this passion and he caught me at the last uh, men's thing. He said, you know, I really know that this is in my heart and I can do this and I want to spend time with these kids and really I really take some time with them and I want to build a team. So I want him to have that opportunity to build a team and really get our youth group back up again. I, I have a uh, Dwayne is also in charge of our men's ministry, uh, men's ministry uh, director of that. He did a great job with that. Uh, Twenty men showed up uh, this month. Uh, right. We just had it a couple of days ago. We talked about having a men's ministry, having a convention. People uh, talked about uh, things that I um, I'm not going to tell you the very deep things, but but they were very open, super open to the point to where we thought like, wow, there are so many stories here that there are some people who could really share, you know, life things with each other. And Arturo had uh, uh, the uh, devotion, which was a good devotion, by the way. And uh, so I just thank God for that. Here's a part of my vision. A part of my dream is this. I see this place as as slowly falling apart. I, I cry, I go home. I, I, I actually, at 57, I cry for it. I, I worry about it. If something happens, I, I run in. Debbie knows I'm here. Uh, Vinny knows I'll be here at 3, 4 in the morning, right? And I'll just come and, and try to fix something. And, you know, and Joe will say, why did you call? You know, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not picking on you, but like, okay, you know, I'm going to call Joe. <laughs> I'm going to call him and come on and help me. And he brought his light with him and gave it to me, you know, and just like, it was a pleasure to have other men come that day and everybody try to work, you know. But here's the thing is I want you to have that passion for this place that it may not be brand new, but it's a church. It may not be brand new, but it's got a gym. It may not be brand new. But it's got a beautiful room in the back that's got a stage that hasn't had a curtain on it for, what, seven years. And we finally got one. Sister Ruthie sewed it up and starting to do some things there and. I said something about a stage, and before I knew it, they had wooden there, and it was built, you know. And uh, I think that, you know, that something I've seen down the years is, is that people say that they'll get married. I'd love you to, I would love you to do the wedding, Pastor Jim, but we'll have our, our a reception at a fire hall or at a this or at this place or down at the bar, you know, or something like that. And it breaks my heart, you know, it's like, Man, if you're going to pay $750, man, give us 450 and take the back, you know, and, and just clean up after yourself and turn the lights out. You know, here's the key, you know, right? And so, I, but I think that we need to invest in that. I think that we need to get some men and some women who would, who would come and say, I'll help clean. I'll help square that away. I think we need to clean up back there and just get rid of a bunch of stuff and make room for some change and for making something new. And making it nice. Amen. Is anybody with me? Make it a place that will be happy for us to come to so that we can say, wow, this is going to be fun. You know, uh, uh, this Christmas or this year, I think that we did a Friday night back there. It was like one of the most fun times I've had in years, man. It was like that was so funny this year. It was like so, especially at the Mario dance. But, but I don't know. We all have our favorites. So just, you know, I think that our gymnasium. I think our gym is a catch for our youth. I think we could catch our youth with that. I think that that now, school as it is now, the charter schools that are coming up and the after-school homework clubs and them not having a place to go, I think it's a safe haven. It's a safe place for kids to come. I think that we just need a couple of men, a couple of women to be able to say, hey, I'm willing to come over on a Thursday and, and, you know, and tell the kids, hey, listen, if you do your homework uh, 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 here, you know, in this room, if you do your homework, get it done. Let me see it. And I'll make sure uh, that you get a snack and you can go play some ball. 
You can play some basketball. Now here, also, I just want to keep this in mind, vision. You know, I found that down the years, 21 years now, that, that if they just go play basketball, it's the big kids, it's the tall kids, and the little girls and the little nerds sit in the corner. Shut up and just throw the ball back if it goes near you because it's basketball, right? So me, I love volleyball because it's like everybody can play, right? You, you like get everybody playing, and that's the point. Everybody came, and they had fun. They didn't come here to get intimidated. And so anybody watching that's got to watch for that not happening. They should have games that are interactive, chess, things like that. Somebody could teach them how to play chess and things that are fun while they're sitting on the side so that they're not on their phones. You know, anybody ever see kids lately? They're all sitting all together and they're all on phones in some other world while they're, while they're right next to each other. And uh, I think that we need to get our youth back and that's how we're going to get it back. We have what's been given to us a couple of years ago, a Brunswick 10-foot pool table with an inch and a half slate. I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but it means it's like they're usually an inch slate and it costs a lot of money. Six, seven, eight thousand dollars. And uh, Larry Turner gave me one. It's in the food bank covered with plywood. It needs to either come up or go down where the kids can play with it. And they need to learn how to play with it. There needs to be rules on how to play with that stuff and take care of it so that it's not trashed. We had a foosball and stuff in the past and it was jumped on, cracked open and stuff like that. So I think that we need to take care of what we have. Amen. And uh, so my thing was more of of like a plea. Here it was. It was in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. If you will allow me, please, just just please give me a few minutes, okay, and, 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 and I'll be done, you know, you know, and offer yourself, you know, I beseech you, I beg you, he's saying, I beseech you, I'm begging you, my brothers, to offer yourselves a living sacrifice. Offer your, offer your bodies, your time, a living sacrifice. And the one thing that's made people leave is that they burn out because, you know, Worm is told, yeah, right, do the, uh, do the uh, children's children down there. And it's like, okay, it's just, it's just going to be a couple of months. And it's been like, what was that, 1993? You know, <laughs> something like that, right? And, and like, so everybody who's got a child, we have to. We, who are, we are adults, leaders. You know, sometimes uh, you can't let me take the bullet and be the offensive one. You have to say, hey, you got kids? Come on. You, uh, you need to take a day in the nursery. And that will let me have three where I worship. And then on yours to worship, you get to worship for three. And if we have eight women and they're all rotating, you only have to do it once every two months. And you're taking care of the kids. And if you see somebody who's weird down there, no, you're not allowed. You know, nobody gets kids. Nobody. I don't care if you call him Poppy, if Daddy, if you don't have that tag, if that mommy didn't take, I, the only one that can take them is the one that bought them. Are you following me? You know, that needs to be strict. You know, we need to get down to there and, and, and tell moms and dads, all of you need to be, all of you have to be my martyrs or my witnesses that, that like, you know, we don't need any furry toys. No furry toys in a nursery. Anybody know why? Germs, man, like lice and, uh, you know, just stuff. Kids, kids, they do what? They're, they put everything in their mouth. You don't want to, oh, yeah, you know, I have a bag full of, you know, of, of just, you know, I wanted to give them the bears. You know, some are old, but they're, it's Winnie the Pooh. It's, this thing is from 1969, you know. It's like, and, and we have them downstairs in the nursery sitting in the middle, you know, so. I think that we should do that. I don't think that teachers in the nursery should be, they said, well, I'm not going to be down here if you don't have a camera. I, wanna, I don't want to miss the, uh, I, I, I don't want to miss our sermon, you know. And it's like, no, no camera down there. No TV for you to watch that. TV, if you want to give videos to the kids, yes. But, but it's your turn to watch the kids. To, they should be learning, right? Uh, right, I did with a child care expert. Like, they should be learning something from you. You know, think, I think of the little kids, you know, anybody look at the City Limits Facebook? How do you get a, a kid to, a, a child by themselves to come up and pray? I mean, how's that happen? Do you train them? 
He said, you better do this. You better, when, when you get there, you better get up there. You better pray. And you're going to make me look good. You better, I'll, 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 I'll beat the pain off of you. you. You know what I mean? Like, no, man, they catch you doing it, and they do it. They, they see you doing it, and they do it. So, so, so we have to be able to talk to each other. And you know that lately speaking in Revelation, like, I'm so excited about that book because I think, you know, like, it is really transforming me. It's changing me. It's, it's like, honestly, my whole, my whole life is changing. You know, it's like a whole new approach from, like, there to there to, like, you know, you know Jesus is coming back. I want to look busy. <laughs> you know, he's coming back. I want to look busy, you know. And so think about those things. You know what? We need some foam, some foam things for downstairs, the carpets. You just can't have them in a nursery. You got to have that vinyl you can mop and and like there's carpeting down there, and it really looks nice, and churches like that, and they came up the sides. It was really cool, but once it gets dirty or spit up on or peed on, it's over, you know, and so there's these foam things that interlock, and we need to get that, but so so either I go out and we hustle it, uh, we ask for it, or we say, hey, I'll help take, take up the carpeting, and and I'll go with you to go try to uh, call, make some calls and see if we can't get some floor because it's for our kids. And people will stay for that. So people have left to other churches because they have the bells and whistles. And we've not invested anything in our church. And we have all the room in the world. I told somebody, told me, they said, man, with the amount of room I walked through your church, it would take millions of dollars to put that flat out. I mean, honestly, if you did it now to put this much room back there, everything in the mezzanine, you know, under everything where the bathrooms are, all that gym and the kitchen, everything, if you were to spread it it would cost you millions it just to roof that would cost millions right i mean think about it i mean we have a wonderful facility that is going to be here that's been here and is still saving souls proof is today this morning still saving souls you know and so i want to ask you to just to i want to ask you to be encouraged you know there's some of you that just go out of your way you know man i mean all of the money on the fundraisers that's been you you know we know that you know, what I mean, we get to eat, you know, and 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 I don't think it should be called fundraisers anymore. I think it should be lunch at city limits. You know, let's let's have lunch, man. I mean, hey, listen, I'm going to go to China buffet anyway. Give me some rice, beans and chicken or, or, or listen, uh, listen, I'm trying to be healthy. Let's make salads, too. Let's make stuff that's healthy, but stuff that you have to come up with and say, this is the menu. There's a menu for going back there. You know, we're going to have some healthy stuff and that's how we're eating. You follow me? I think that there should be exercise and there should be martial arts. There should be something downstairs in that gym. It should be organized and safe, but there should be something so that we can maintain health. Amen? And I know there's some people here who know that stuff and know it well. And you should be using that gift because it's going to attract kids. It's going to bring them in. It's going to be another way to bring them in. So my message is, is, is not so much It's just a Offer yourself a living sacrifice. Very simply, step one is, is face the reality. Face the reality is, is, is that things around here do not look good. If you get a quorum of maybe 35 people, it, it's, it's really not, not that proud, right? I mean, although most churches don't feel bad, most churches, that's what comes out as the quorum. You know, even if it's a thousand-member church, you get 122 people <laughs> show up for the business meeting. But it's you who make the difference in the whole thing. I mean, in the whole future of the church. It's you. It's you who make the difference in the roof. And it's you who makes the difference in everything that we do. And the sound and our sound quality and the lighting and the carpeting and the stains and the back and the kitchen and the junk and the trash. I mean, are we going to be hoarders or let's get rid of that stuff, man? It's in the back hallways. We should be able to walk around, right? Anybody with me? Say amen. Come on, just. So tonight, I want to deputize you as active members. That's what they call you. That's what you call when you sign back there. You're an active member. You're an active member, a real member. I remember as that covenant, I remember reading it to all of you. I will be a part of this church. I will be a part of what it does. I will be a part of its testimony. I will not talk about it. All my brothers, I will not talk about them and judge them. I will be a part of the finances of giving to it. Folks, if we're out there and we're 
going to churches and they're giving me for like a two hour, uh, an hour sermon, 12 grand. 12 grand so we could pay all the taxes up for that. I think that we need to start to say, hey, man, is my house in order? I need to start tithing. You know, I'm serious, man. Malachi 8, you know, it says very clearly, will a man rob God? A man rob God? You say, how are we robbing you, God? They asked him. He says, that you're robbing me by your tithes and your offering. All of you are living large, and the house of the Lord is falling apart around you. i got to come and make excuses. I remember I used to walk people through this place. I was happy as can be. And I can barely get around because it's like, oh, excuse that. I'm sorry about, sorry about that. Excuse that. Sorry about that. And I used to be like, it's old, but it's beautiful. It's clean. It smells good. You know, they sprayed it, you know, and, and just I think it's up to us again. Okay. Bertha is working right now. We're going to make some changes to her, by the way, but she's working now. But she's not what should be going into the future. Because oil filling that, that, that costs, I'm telling you, it costs a grand and a half just to put a couple hundred gallons. You could put a giant heater right there to blow heat right on you, just like in the back. Except they're too noisy, so you have to make something different. So my plan is not, my vision is not all that spiritual, like, you know, you know everybody's going to be, I want you all to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I think that stuff's going to happen. That's going to be a natural byproduct of getting on fire for God. But I think that what needs to happen is that we need to take ownership and say, this is our house. This is our house. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's our house. We need to insulate it. Now, I was at home, I took a short nap. I was already thinking of how do we insulate those windows now and, and still keep the stained glass so that, so that when the air conditioner is turned on, when it's warm, it can stay cool and not be hot in here. The air conditioner will work. Are you following me? So this, all these things are bells all work, but they need to be wired up. I have the rope at home in my garage. It was given to me by Saul. I mean, this rope is expensive. He gave it to me, a giant roll, and it just uh, they just need to be wired. You know, I mean, it's a wonderful way to testimony, man. You know, to ring all three of them. They sound great, man. They, you know, all the people hear them, and, and this church at City Limits. I was at Hackman's three weeks ago. It broke my heart. Somebody was there that we all know and and their grandsons and now they're bigger and they came and said hi pastor jim and the little brother came and said hi they said really you don't know him he's pastor jim but we used to go to his church but but they're closed down now a grandmom said so i caught grandmom while we were checking out and you know me It's all about it's to a location, location, and positioning. So there's the right amount of people there. You say, hey, by the way, the church is not closed. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Grandma, you said it was. It, it, <laughs> out of the mouths of babes, not closed down. It's full. It's not full with you, but it's full. I think that the 8 o'clock service, I think we can get people to that. I think that some of you need to start inviting some friends, man, inviting people. I mean, I don't know where we got 18 people to come up and get saved. I know there's a bunch of people. I, I did not even know them. Did you know half of those people, anybody? I don't know them. And I, and I was asking that there was an Oriental, uh, excuse me, Asian. I don't even know what's politically correct anymore. But just, just uh, I saw him. And I said, hey, are you going to be here? Well, he made sure his daughters came over. And, and they just wanted to give me a hug. They're two cute little girls, right? They just wanted to give me a hug, right? And, and, and so he goes back and says, good girls, you know, it goes like that. And they, he, he walks back. And I go over, I introduce myself to him, and I ask him as he's coming back. He says, I've been coming for three weeks straight, man. I, I love it. Of course I'm coming back. <laughs> right? So there's a staff meeting every Tuesday morning, and we get together, and Sister Ruthie goes over all the MIAs or the POWs. That's the uh, prisoners of warfare or the missing in action. And we find out who they are, and they call them up, and they see what's wrong. Is there something going on? Did somebody offend you? Is something wrong? Are you sick? Can we go visit you? And and uh, Chill and his wife aren't here, but you know they're going to be uh, they're going to be uh, heading up our visitation team to go out and take some bread, take some man, and pray for families, take some oil, and pray for them. 
You see, what you don't want to do is get people used to it. I used to do about 15 years ago. I called everybody when they weren't here. I'd call them. I'd call them on my phone. Next tell. <laughs> and what happened was, if I didn't call them, they don't come. Well, if the pastor doesn't call me, I don't come. How about if a brother or sister calls? Right or wrong? You see, I mean, if the pastor doesn't come, well, you know, I didn't get a call from the pastor. I'm not coming. It shouldn't be like that. It should be the body of Christ. Amen? So I'm not going to bore you anymore. I'm just going to pray for you now and just tell you, you know, I'll ask if there are any questions that uh, my report is, is that uh, we're working on the roof. We're working on, on Bertha. We are working on the our cruncher downstairs. Uh, that's our sump pump. It's got two motors. We've, we've got both motors have been gotten and paid for. That's $1,400, a gift, plus the electrician came and spent nine hours there, a gift, a, a major electrician, plus he found uh, uh, all these wires in the walls that were about to catch fire, fixed them, a gift, you know, and that's, that's the second time he came down, so, and he's coming back again in two weeks, so just, you know, there's people that help him with the roof, all this stuff is free, but it can't go on like this. We got to step up and say, you know what, honey? You're making 200 bucks a week. 20 bucks goes to city limits. And that's it. And guess what? I found in my life and in my family, and I'm a giver too. When I've given stuff away, I tell Debbie, check me, test me. I tell her, test me. She said, but that's our last. I say, Debbie, just hang in there. And she's, and Debbie's frugal. It's not cheap, frugal. It's frugal. Just, just you know, she's like, well, you we got to pay, you know. Uh, just like, don't worry, you know. And boy, don't you know it, man. A check comes in. Somebody slides an envelope in my pocket. And something, I say, look, here. She's like, I should have known, you know. <laughs> just like, uh, but you don't get used to that, you know. You don't. I love you so much. Um, I don't miss a penny. I don't want to live on the street, though. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do to retire. Pastors figure that out. They get their churches to do that. The last pastor at Emmanuel got his doctorate paid for, 62 grand, and then left. Now he's in Florida. You know, I, I haven't asked you for any of that. I don't want that. I don't know how I'm going to retire. I don't know what I'm going to do, you know. So I, so I get insurance. So if something happens to me, I told Debbie to pull the plug and get the insurance money. She unplugged the TV. That's not what I meant. That was a joke. I love you guys. Thank you. You are those, you are those, listen to me. When Jesus took those in, to the garden, he had 11 with him. Judas was with the Roman cohort. He had 11, and he took three of his garden friends in. This is what this is. These are the garden friends. These are the ones that, come on, we'll be here, Pastor Jim. We'll be here tonight. It's not, you know, this <laughs> good game on. <laughs> really wish you'd hurry up, but, you know, <laughs> just, you know, uh, you know, uh, thank God for TiVo, and, but I'd rather see it live right when the, right when the fumble happens, you know, but thank you for coming, man. I just want to ask you now if you got anything that you want to share. Yeah, please. I got you. I, I got you. And listen to me. And, okay. And, 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 and there's pros with that and there's cons. What are the cons? Anybody know? Liability. 
Anybody ever see a little kid pull a weight off of one side of a, of, a bar, of a barbell? Anybody know what happens? That 40-pound piece of steel with, with the other 50 pounds on it goes that way and cracks whatever's on the other side. And we've had that happen. We had a kid chip his tooth, and it cost us $22,000. Because of that incident, our insurance went up to where our deductible is now $20,000. They want to make sure we don't have any more accidents. If you do, get twenty grand up. So stuff like that. We have a whole room <laughs> that's full of gym equipment. But when we put the raw stuff out there, the kids, believe it or not, they get down there and play. Remember, Ray? We used to lock the doors. What happened one time? A kid was, uh, we, we heard screaming. We're all leaving. We hear, yo, yo, yo. We're like, there can't be anybody in here. The gym is locked and everything. Well, he, he went through the window and, and dropped himself into the gym just to play basketball. Well, we're done, church. We're going home. He, uh, he'd have been there through the night if we wouldn't have heard him. But he jumped in the window. through the win so, so then we put glass there. So, yes, we want to do something like that, but very organized. You know, stuff that like it's on coasters. <laughs> Roll it back in, roll it into the room, roll it out. It's time for that, and then it's, you know, it's time to put it away. All right? So just, you know, and we need to clean this place up first. Downstairs, we've got plenty of room where some stuff like that could fit, but we need to clean up. So I'm going to have a cleanup day, and I'm giving you a warning now. Mark what you want, because if it doesn't have a mark on it, I am going to be your enemy for only a year. I found out that you get over it. Oh, it takes you a year, but you get over it. Where's my shepherd costumes? In the garbage. All of them. Where's my Christmas lights? In the garbage. Where's our fake tree? In the garbage. Don't even get it. If you get me a dumpster, I go ballistic. I stuff off the roof, man, little kids. Just anyway, it's just love. Is there anybody else? You just want to share something, a, a word of encouragement to, to, to the flock, to us. Just, just take a minute. Anybody want to just share something on your heart? No? No. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's it. That's it. Okay. I think I, I don't know, somebody in the room in, in one of the board meetings said some people have to be asked. Like, they really won't come out and volunteer. They almost have to be asked. So I'm going to be asking you to help out with particular areas of ministry, okay? Because I want you to be involved. I want you to be involved. And, and, and it may be something you say, I hate doing that. Well, try it, and, and we'll try something else in three months. And, and you won't get stuck in the nursery for nine years. It, it, you know, cross, C-R-O-S-S, -S, uh, create a reservoir of specialized servants. There you go. That, that works for me. Create a reservoir of specialized servants. So just get people to cross-train, cross-pollinate, and learn a couple of different things. So when there's no one here, like, like I'm like, oh, man, there's nobody at the computer. And I, I'm like running up there. Somebody say, I got that, man. I know how to turn it on. I got that. 
you know, and just help out, okay, so we can get squared away. Somebody find out how to get these stains off and just tell me what to do, and we'll do it. There's some, you know, just uh, whatever it is. You know, I mean, it's our house, so let's take a walk through and just see and say, you know, I can do that. I can do that, and you'd be surprised how, how uh, you'll probably think, well, it won't show up on the radio. It will show up. It will get noticed. Amen? Okay, uh, City Limits Assembly of God, 2014 meeting. If there are no questions, would somebody make a motion that we close this year's meeting? Second, first, second, so what it followed, done. Thank you so much for being here, okay? Thank you. <laughs>